Hello everyone, and Happy New Year 2012. We made it to a brand new year, and no people, this year the world is not going to end, I doubt it. Anyways, I hope everyone had a great Christmas and New Year, and what way to start off the year is with my first video of 2012. Today's video is my top 19 best Disney Channel shows. Let's get started, shall we? Starting off at number 19 is Nat Naturally Sadie. I'm sure most people don't remember this show, but I do. At first, I was not interested in the show, but sooner or later, I was. The show is about a 14-year-old girl by the name of Sadie Hawthorne who goes to high school and enjoys observing animal behavior of people with her friends Margaret and Rain to help her out until she figures it out on her own. The show, along with Life with Derek, are the only Canadian shows there on Disney Channel. Sure, the show was stupid, but it was stupid funny and had its funny moments. Especially in the episode Home Alone, the part where Rain and Margaret had a rap battle because people think that they were a couple. <laughs> Those two had me in tears from laughing so hard at their rap verses. Oh my god. Yeah, so naturally Sadie was a cool show. And you have to admit, it was better than any of the live action crap Disney offers these days. Plus, Charlotte Arnold and Jasmine Richards, who play Sadie and Margaret... They are so pretty. Now moving on to number 18 is The Replacements. Again, a lot of people probably barely remembers this show, but I thought it was okay. The show was focused on Todd and Riley Deering, two siblings who lived their entire lives in the orphanage, wondering where their birth parents were the whole time, until they find a Flinko ad and receive two adopted parents, one a spy and a, uh, the other a daredevil. In the series, they would call the Flinko Company whenever there's a big situation happening. Anyways, this show was not the best, but it was okay. But the show kind of reminded me of the Fairly Odd Parents. Probably because, like in the Fairly Odd Parents, Timmy always grants wishes to his fairy godparents to wish for whatever he wants to make his life better. But then something bad happens and he goes back to the way it was. The same with this show. Whenever you see Todd or Riley calling the guy from the Flinko company to um, replace something to make their lives a little bit better. Every, you know, everything starts off good, but then it goes bad, and then it goes back to normal with their lives. So it reminded me something like that, except there was no wands involved or godparents or wishes involved in this series. Oh, and plus that one nerd kid what's his name Sheldon yeah I think his name was Sheldon <laughs> man he was funny as hell he had me rolling especially the way he talked oh <laughs> I always cracked up at that one Indian kid with with his uh, funny looking teeth <laughs> oh man <laughs> that was funny as hell it's just the, the way his teeth looked <laughs> but anyways The Replacements was an okay show now moving on to number 17 the Emperor's New School. The show was good, but I loved the movie New Groove better. The series took place where Cusco had to graduate from school to become Emperor. The show was pretty good, it had its funny moments, and the animation was pretty good as well. And Cusco and Melina would have made a cute couple. Plus, I had a crush on her back then. Oh, and rest in peace to Eartha Kitt, who did the voice of Yzma. You're the best. Now at number 16, we have the buzz on Maggie. This show was about a fly named Maggie Pesky, whose dream is to become a famous rock star. It was a cool show, the plots were okay, the animation was decent, and the intro of the song kicked ass. That was a badass intro for this show. Now at number 15 is Fish Hooks. As the show continued to show more episodes, I absolutely love this show. It's funny, especially Milo, he cracks me up. The animation in the show reminds me of the Amazing World of Gumballs animation. So, Fish Hooks is alright with me, and the three main characters in the show are likable. I hope Oscar and B get together in the, fut in the future episodes. Now, number 14 is Lilo and Stitch the series. The movie was great, and so was the show. Plus, I love the one crossover episode where Lilo and Stitch meet Kim Possible. That was awesome. I wish Disney did more crossovers these days with shows like they did back then. I would love to see a Phineas and Ferb and Fish Hooks crossover and hopefully it'll work. I would love to see that happen, but we'll see. 
Moving on to number 13, Brandy and Mr. Whiskers. I love this show to death. This show was about a dog named Brandy Harrington and a rabbit named Mr. Whiskers who end up getting stuck in an Amazon rainforest together. So let's start off with Brandy. Brandy is a, a rich girl. Sure, she can be a snobby bitch at times. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. But deep down, she cares about Whiskers and her friends. So she can be caring when she wants to. And when I was younger, I had a crush on her for some reason, even for a dog animal. I thought she was hot. I was like, wow, that's one hot dog. <laughs> and what even makes her an interesting and great character is that she's voiced by the one and only hottie Katie, Kaylee Kulioko, who was also known for the role in a TV show, John Ritter's A Simple Rules, and currently on The Big Bang Theory. So she's a pretty good actress, and she's all right with me. And here we have is Whiskers, the hyperactive, lovable character in the show. Man, Whiskers was funny as hell. He had me rolling. Man, he is funny, especially the way he talks. Oh, my gosh. Whiskers all right with me. He is so freaking funny, especially if any character is voiced by Charlie Adler, the guy who also did the voice of Ickes from Iron Monsters, Cow and Chicken, and um, and Red Guy from the Cow and Chicken series and Iron Weasel series as well, and um, Iron Baboon from the Iron Weasel series. So he's he's very good. He's a great cart voice cartoon actor. So. He's all right with me. He's the best. But as far as all that, Brandy and Mr. Whiskers was a great show. And I miss it on Disney Channel. I think it should have ran for like at least a couple more seasons with new episodes. I just think they ended too early. I think it was totally unfair. But Brandy and Mr. Whiskers forever. It was an all right show with me. Anyways, let's move on to number 12. The Sweet Life on Deck. This show was a sequel and spinoff of The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. In this show, Zack and Cody start going to high school on a ship called the Seven Seas High. And along with London and Mr. Mosby. So, yeah, you still they still had the same four characters from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody together. But I was disappointed that Ashley Tisdale wasn't in the series. I really thought she would she should have been the sweet life on deck. I mean, at least she made that one appearance in the one episode, but the sweet life on deck wasn't the same without her. But anyways, they start meeting new people, including Bailey Pickett, who is somehow Cody's dream girl that he finally finds and always looked for. And then there was Woody, who was known for saying things like hurtful and damn it I mean dang it <laughs> sorry about that yeah dang it and then there was Doc Shaw he was only on the Sweet Life on Deck for a little bit where he played as Marcus Little and had a crush on London but besides all that the show was pretty good and I was just sad when it had his you know season finale you know, everybody graduating and stuff. It was very touching, very touching episode. And the Sweet Life on Deck, it, like I said, it was a it was a pretty good show. Yeah, it, it had its funny moments, and it was all right with me. Um, reruns can be shown st um, on Disney XD, so you know, it hasn't gone anywhere completely. Anyways, let's move on to number eleven. Wizards of Waverly Place. This show is awesome. I like Wizards. I love Wizards. Uh, the show is about an Italian Mexican family by the name of the Russos who live in Wizards of Waverly Place in Manhattan's Greenwich Village neighborhood. And they have the three kids of the family Alex, Justin, and Max and they are in training to become great wizards but only one of them will be the family wizard 
Yeah, so I like Wizards of Waverly Place. Uh, the, the plots are okay. It's nothing special. And um, it's a very entertaining and interesting show to me. So Wizards is all right with me. And remember, if you love Wizards, remember that this Friday is the season finale of Wizards of Waverly Place. Who will be the family wizard? May 6, 2011. So if, if you love Wizards, check it out because... Once Wizards is gone, Disney Channel to me is definitely, definitely, definitely dead. Wizards is the last live action show on Disney Channel. And now we're going to be left with all these crappy live action shows. All this teeny boppy crap. Uh, so long, Wizards. No. Man, I'm going to miss this show to death. And it is one of the longest Disney Channel series ever. Surpassing, just surpassing That's So Raven. That's So Raven. Amazing. Okay, so this is my part one of my top 19 best Disney Channel shows. Uh, stay tuned for the final 10 in the part two one coming soon. So, hope you enjoyed my top 19 so far. Bye-bye.